I will be above and not beneath. There were some things that were said before that statement. So most believers just find where the promise was mentioned and we take it without understanding the conditions connected to it. This is very important. That leads me to the next point. What is the second principle? When you want to use keys to open doors, the faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. That the promises on their own, knowing them is important, but until they are engaged, they cannot deliver. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Blessed is she that believe, for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were told her by the mouth of the Lord. Just because the Lord said it, does not mean that there will be a performance there is another factor that is responsible for performance faith to engage the promises to deliver in one word you have learned here that faith is obedience in one word faith is obedience there cannot be obedience until there is an instruction you see if i do not ask you to come and you start walking here people are safe to interpret it as worry wandering around or madness your movement is only called obedience if i ask you to come are we together now job chapter 36 and verse 11 job 36 and verse 11 god is changing someone's life if they obey and serve him the bible says they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure is that in your bible the condition don't just say i claim prosperity i claim pleasures that is a blind ignorant believers approach if they obey and serve him so make sure your obedience is in place your service is in place then the latter becomes a reality in your life Isaiah 119 If ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land there is good in every land Abuja is a good land Lagos is a good land Zamfara is a good land is that true Europe is a good land Canada America anywhere across Africa no matter how politically degenerated respectfully speaking that nation is the bible still says there is good in every land but your portion only comes to you if you are willing and obedient hallelujah <laughs> someone once told me that he came i think he came to his office in the morning and he saw some a physical some kind of charm they they you know grounded pepper that you are still seeing the seed red hot pepper they just poured it in front, in front of the person's office and i asked the person what did you do you know and the person was, ah, so this is how they want to program a hard life a painful life you know the way pepper is to the eyes i said look my friend i now i don't i don't downplay that we we have to deal with people based on the realms we meet them there are realms where you have to sympathize with them, take it easy and explain their victory. There are realms where you just pass and move on. When Archbishop Benson Idahosa, they brought, I think, a chicken or something for incantation and they went to cook it and eat it because a body without a spirit is dead. Instead of wasting the body too, you remove the spirit and eat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. I like this one. 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass, 1, not 19, 1. Shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Are you seeing conditions there? To observe and to do all that I command thee this day, that the Lord your God shall set thee on high. Above how many nations? Please talk to me above all nations of the earth do you really believe this 
Look, my little children saying, I believe it. May God bless them, our koinonia children. Celebrate them again. By the time they get to our level, they will be by far better than us. In the name of Jesus. Next verse, verse 2. Deuteronomy 28. And all these blessings, what blessings? These blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Be patient while we read. Verse 3. What are the blessings? Blessed shall thou be in the city. It's Abuja a city. That means I must be blessed in this city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. The field is where you sow. Your business, your work, your ministry, whatever it is. To be blessed means you are empowered to excel. You are empowered to prosper. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Shout amen. amen. That means you will never give birth to any stubborn child who will become an armed robber. Say amen. amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Please keep it media. And the fruit of your ground. I will not sow in futility. Blessed shall be the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5. It says, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. There are people who are only blessed when they come in. They are not blessed when they go out. There are those who are only blessed when they go out. They are not blessed when they come in. The Bible gives us the portrait of a blessed man that you are blessed both when you come in and when you go out. Say amen. amen. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. This is for you now. The Lord shall command the blessing upon your storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hands to do. And it shall bless you in the land which the Lord God giveth thee. Reading to 12 verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. It says, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Verse 11, the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give you. Verse 12, let's read it together. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to thy land in its season uh -huh, and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow I believe this I am not a curse I am a blessing you must believe you are a blessing don't get a job and simply because they said we don't know what kind of employee you are. No, I am a blessing. There is an advantage in your life by reason of Christ and his life and his word that dwells within you. Everywhere you go, you are a blessing. Do you believe that? When Jacob went to the house of Laban, he knew that he was a blessing. And when Laban began to multiply, everything began to multiply. Laban used divination to inquire. And they told him it was on account of the presence of Jacob. So when Jacob wanted to leave, he exchanged his daughters to prolong his stay. That you are such a blessing. That your boss in office will say from the day you stepped here. The only thing you should bring or your value, your physical, technical skill is not the only thing you should bring to an organization. You are the ark bearer. You are taking the ark, the presence of God to that organization. As soon as you arrive, like the ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom, things begin to shift and change. May that be your testimony. Amen. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Get to a point where people long to see you come and visit them. 
they will even say you've not visited us in two weeks because the last time you came as you were going out it's as though you kept some souvenirs several things started coming doors opening great things happening to us my husband who was not serious with god started becoming serious studying the word going to church please come again there are people as you are living the same i don't know what you brought but as soon as you left police came as soon as you left somebody hit a car somewhere and they came to say who is the owner of this house as soon as you left i changed that negative atmosphere over you i say it again i changed that negative atmosphere over you shout i am a blessing let the devil hear it say i am a blessing carry this mentality i am a blessing if someone meets you and say what do you have to offer well i may not have the technical skill but there is one thing i have the presence of god and such as i have it can be a gift to you listen spiritual blessings are real gifts they can be given the bible speaking about abraham said he gave isaac everything he had but to all the sons that came from his concubines he gave them gifts he gave them physical gifts but he put something on isaac and said go are we together now so you can greet someone with a handshake i made a covenant with god you know i've, I've said it and i say it with every sense of humility and responsibility that nobody should have to see me twice to be blessed if it is true that he lives within me that i actually say good morning no i will go for a retreat it's true you just lean near somebody's shop to take a bottle of minerals and as soon as you drop the empty bottle and leave you left something there customers just begin to come and the person what happened if handkerchiefs and aprons can carry the presence and the power of god then it means that an overflow is like is dripping like rain listen this is the mentality i am giving you if you carry the mentality of a needy and a beggar one who is waiting for people to be i'm not just talking in terms of uh, finances and the rest no you carry spiritual value it shouldn't lead to pride but there is a healthy confidence that you should have are we together now yes someone brings you to his house and says god bless you this and that you are done discussing and you say well could we say a word of prayer father in the name of jesus this man has granted us access here we leave the peace of god with you and you walk away usually people will casually say amen and then the blessings begin to follow Koinonia, please hear me. Understand what you carry. Understand the spiritual implication of the anointing and the power and the grace that you have. You may not have physical cash in your pocket, but do not act like somebody who is empty. You sang that song there, that there is an overflow. The Holy Ghost lives in you. There is a spirit in man. You are not a curse. No. Always remember Genesis 12 and verse 3. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed indoctrinate yourself i am not a blessing i am I'm, I'm not a curse i am not a luggage to anybody's destiny no reject it perhaps you are staying in the house of someone maybe um your biological parents are not there and you are staying in the house of someone if they begin to complain that you are not a blessing go back and pray this scripture lord you didn't bring me to this house to cause pain and inconvenience in the name of jesus i am not a curse i declare that the life of god within me find expression and become a blessing in this house are we together you go for a job interview in addition to your certificate you carry the presence of god remember these are the mysteries that grant us command in the name of Jesus beyond the job thank you very much sir the Bible says if you go to a city and they receive you it says let your peace remain that means peace is, is you can distribute it that man will return back home and the wife 
that is like Tom and Jerry fighting up and down. We say, honey, you are welcome home. And he says, tell me you are joking. You left your peace. A deposit of your peace. What is suddenly happening? I think we should not fight in this house again. The man will call you and say, give that guy the job. The last one, the one I sent out in annoyance, bring him back. I have discerned that the Lord is with you. May that be your testimony. There is nobody who is a believer in Christ. There is nobody who is connected to this vision who should be a cause. The moment people start complaining that your life is an inconvenience, go for a retreat. Lord, I am a blessing. I am not a curse. In the name of Jesus Christ, my friends cannot run away from me. If there is anything, any climate, any atmosphere that is not of God, I banish it out of my life. In the name of Jesus, I declare I am a blessing. You travel to Lagos, you travel abroad, you travel from Abuja. As you are walking out of this service, in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. Because I am in covenant with the elements of creation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, good happens to me all the time. Exceeding great and precious promises. Someone just calls you and says, where are you? We are just done with Koinonia, I am going home. Hold on, hold on, don't go, just wait there. God gave me an instruction. Aha, uh -huh. now it is working. What is the instruction? He said, I should bless you. I should bless your father. I should bless your mother. Where are they? Listen, you will never be able to share some testimonies till you believe these things. The faith to engage these promises. The faith to engage these promises. Write this down, please obedience to god's word obedience to god's word is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform on your behalf obedience to god's word is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform on your behalf you want to see the power of god made manifest in your life follow the path of obedience obedience is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform the only way to make his power manifest in your life you have that down please write this down too no amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience no amount of sacrifice and i tell you this from the depth of my heart no amount of spiritual sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience first samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 watch this now samuel said had the lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams next verse it says for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected thee from being king. He was saying this to Saul. There is no amount of sacrifice that will replace obedience. If God says go left, even while you are praying and you go right, you are in disobedience. Are we together? Yes. When Hannah cried, she was crying in disobedience together with the young lad. When the Lord appeared, he said, go back to your mistress. Your mistress. Follow that path of obedience. Many of us do not understand the power of obedience. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. I will not give and yet I must increase. I am brilliant. And God says, I respect you. Go ahead. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He says, for by your words you are justified. By your words you are consumed. I will not speak. 
things will just happen I, I i have a special there's a way i understand myself even jesus christ declared spoke spoke about his death and his resurrection that you destroy this temple and in three days i will rebuild it again he was speaking of the temple of his body so if you don't find yourself speaking the word of god over your life and destiny you step into your office you step into your shop in the name of jesus i lay my hands and i declare it is blessed you are the works of my hands when you are praying don't pray blind prayers pray scripture based prayers scripture based prayers are the kinds of prayers that are consistent with the will of god the bible says if we ask anything according to his will so don't just ask what is the scriptural basis for your asking lord bless me today based on what the bible declares this is the day the lord has made and it says i will rejoice and be glad in it i expect to rejoice and to be glad in it is that true yes in the lord's prayer he said when you pray say give us this day our daily bread your daily bread is not just loaf of bread your daily bread means every supply that makes for your sufficiency so when you wake up in the morning prepared by the benevolence of the father is the daily bread for that day insist that it arrives that day this is what makes the life of other people look like they are magicians and then other people wonder why is this thing working for others and yet it's not working for others as a couple you can hold your hands and pray in the name of Jesus the Bible declares that if two shall agree as touching anything it shall be done unto them we decree and declare that in this Abuja by the mystery of Rehoboth God is giving us our own space we declare it as at the time you are speaking there may not be anything there we obtain the grace and we obtain the intelligence to make this happen and the Spirit of the Lord begins to lead you line upon line if the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want Lord I refuse to be in want because I make you my shepherd I yield to your wisdom this is the believers advantage most believers will not live this way and yet wonder why their lives do not reflect the glory of God the gift of a man the Bible declares makes room for him is that true and brings him before great men so in the name of Jesus I declare that laziness is out of my life I will shape my gift since I see that it is connected to favor that every time I come across people let it be that I am valuable enough to be a blessing to them don't just start thinking now that this person is here I am going to get something no think like a giver it is more blessed to give than to receive I'm not talking of giving money there are many other valuable things you can give say amen. amen you're a man of God here in ministry I want you to listen ministry is not going to grow because you want it to grow these are the forces that you engage the force of prayer the force of value the force of the word the force of the power of the Holy Spirit and I if I be lifted up from the earth the Bible says I will draw all men is that in your Bible I will draw all men to myself wisdom many of us lack the requisite wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice that with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness doth not wisdom cry the bible says any man does any man lack wisdom let him cry unto god that giveth liberally lord i see that my decisions are not superior decisions i am sincere but i keep becoming a victim of foolish decisions i take responsibility and based on the integrity of your word i admit that i lack wisdom and i obtain by the spirit of wisdom superior wisdom that comes from above not sophia and the bible says everyone that asketh receiveth lord i am praying according to your will so i give thanks because i receive answers to my prayer that is a believer's prayer suddenly you find out that god begins to lead you 
to access materials you will come for koinonia that sunday and here is a teaching on wisdom you will go online and hear a message everything around you is flashing wisdom that is god saying your answer has come you settle down and you camp with the spirit of wisdom oh i see now i can make superior decisions because wisdom is justified by her children and you begin to make very superior decisions and your life begins to rise and i will give you the keys of the kingdom that these keys come by knowledge and they come by faith even through obedience you engage these doors there is no power in existence that sustains what it takes to keep you down believe me right now economically speaking our nation and the nations of africa there is a lot of financial turmoil you know organizations are folding up several things are happening respectfully speaking even co-laborers in the gospel are feeling the bite of these economic things let me bring you a word of hope there is nothing new under the sun the bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that will happen again economic but there were two people who were spared in samaria the king and the prophet and you can be both When there was famine in the land, there were two groups of people who were spared. Kings and prophets have a system of immunity that keeps them. Are we together now? Yes. And somebody will just come to you and say, the Lord gave me an instruction to take care of you and your family all through this year. Are you sure it is God with all my heart? And God begins to open up doors for you. You will think many people who are testifying here are lying if you don't engage scripture. I'm telling you this. Until you become a practitioner of the word through knowledge and faith, you will always think that people are just lying or stage managing it here. Hallelujah. Everything looks difficult until knowledge demystifies it. Light brings that which was hidden to bear. I have cried in this house and I've cried the subject of favor that the days that are coming will require the ministry of favor. I sincerely submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how people live without the favor of God. I don't know how people survive without the favor of God. If the favor of God is not at work in your life, don't say I can push by. No, no. You will get to a dead end permanently. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Listen, when I was about to start this work, you see, I read many books. I read many opinions from sincere people. Wonderful templates as to how to run ministry, as to how to do. And I had the privilege of watching different people. And I went to God, I said, Lord, I respect every template that I see, but you are the one who has called me. Reveal to me the blueprints that holds the secret of the future. For with you is the path of life, and it is in your light that we see light. Everybody's weight is working based on what is written, but you are that which is written yourself. Reveal to me the path of life. And that is still my prayer today. Your life becomes an unending wonder. I cried to God and I said, Father, there are some things I do not want to happen in this ministry. I never want to get to a point where I have to manipulate people because of economic hardship, because of this and that. No, I'm not in that business forever. Or stratifying people. You, you are a rich man. Come, you are my friend. How much are you going to give me? Before I... No, 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 no. 
and lord i do not want ministry where today you rise and you are doing well and tomorrow everything deflates as if it was a charm you were using so what is the secret that makes it sustainable If you do not believe what I'm sharing with you, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but your life will be a consistent misrepresentation of the power of God. Something about your life will drive people from the faith life in a way that you cannot imagine. I made up my mind that as far as God is concerned and this work is concerned, this ministry will remain a sign and a wonder in every sense of the word not from a competitive standpoint no but that these results are not happening by luck ladies and gentlemen if you ever think this ministry is going to go down one day or have a story please think again find out what we are standing on first Have you built your family on that rock? Have you built your business on that rock? Or are you building on shadows? Co-laborers in the gospel, what are we building on? Are you building on fashion? Or you are building on this is what is happening now? No. It is only that which is built on the rock that stands. The floods will come. The rains will come. But that which is built on the rock, I assure you that it will stand. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking to you because God wants to give us longevity of impact. This balloon success of up today, down tomorrow, no. It is true that life operates in seasons, but the Bible says, whose leaves does not wither. Is that in your Bible? Do you know why his leaf does not wither? Because he does not wait for rainy or dry season. He is like a tree that is planted by the riverside. Your source of supply never depletes. Hallelujah. This is what we believe. This is what we stand for. So that when you are wondering, why is God doing the mighty things that he's doing in and through our lives? Ladies and gentlemen, there is no secret. We found it with the foolishness of a seeker's passion. We found where it was written that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. You are not the first to be broke. You are not the first to be sick. You are not the first to be in need. You are not the first to be in need of a husband, a wife, a child, a helper. You are not the first. There are people who have gone ahead of us. The Bible says follow them who through faith and patience. You can follow them or keep arguing your path until you cry and weep. Man of God, you are not the first to start a ministry. Apostle, you don't know how much it is to pay. What does that mean? They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. There is a God in heaven, no. It's not just cloud that is above here. There is a God that sits in heaven. He is alive. Please, when you study your Bible, believe it. It's a risk to start leading people if you have not sorted the issue of unbelief. Hallelujah. Very soon as God grants us grace, we will now start our own series of projects and that will be another dimension of signs and wonders again. You see? Yes, absolutely. It is true. There is no, it says, of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. There shall be no end one layer of impact upon another i've told you that compared to where god is taking us we are just a step out of the cave believe me for his majesty watch to see what our lives become as we serve him watch to see what you become 
as you serve him you may not look like it now but ladies and gentlemen as you submit to the dealings of the spirit then you will become now are we the sons of god it says and it does not yet appear what i'm saying now is not just what i started saying these are things we've been saying right from the time there was no comeliness whatsoever we are the ones who change the word of god does not change it changes other people yet it is not changed itself rejoice and be glad because the word of god is working rejoice and be glad man of god the anointing may not be at work there but do not rejoice there is a key that you are receiving someday god is going to grant you grace and you will be leading an international ministry and serving the purposes of the kingdom with honor and dignity you be patient and stay with the word get the keys there are many doors to destiny make sure you get all the keys don't line up nations behind you and then be calculating what key do i use when there are nations waiting to pass through you no he that strives for mastery is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully please hear me there are many of you here in ministry god is still making you and forming you do not be afraid and do not rush be don't go ahead of god be patient let him build that women ministry the way he intended it to be let him build that prophetic ministry that apostolic ministry and you will be reintroducing something to creation that they have not seen before businessman all you see is not all there is don't say everybody must be corrupt and put their hand somewhere you can never rise be careful don't generalize no there, 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 there is a fountain listen job said there is a part which the eyes of the which the the eyes of the the vulture has not seen a part which no fowl knoweth the eyes of the vulture even the whelps of the lion has not trodden don't think it's everybody that rises by crookedness just because that is the only thing you know all you know is not all there is Are we together now? Don't think everybody God is using is using charms or using all of these things. It's easier to serve God than to get charms. Because when you come to God, He maintains everything. Do you know what it means to maintain all these demonic things that will backfire one day? You stand upon the rock you stand upon the word no fear because you know whom you have believed as a man of God you know that the hand of God is upon you I expect favor every day I expect lifting every day God is putting it in the hearts of men to bless me. He will never bring a work and not bring people to stand by you. When I sent you, he said, lackest thou anything. So the thing is to verify whether he sent you. If he did not send you, go back and be patient till he sends you. But if it is true that he has sent you, find rest. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? This is how we engage keys in the kingdom. Some of you may need to go and write, get at least seven scriptures. Or maybe ten, two, two, two powerful scriptures across the several areas that are, instead of going around to tell everybody about your problems, they can't solve it and they will complicate the situation again. Someone will sit down and say, tell me your whole story while you are looking for 30,000. You will tell the person the whole story and say, I'm sorry. I was expecting some money if you had come earlier. So why did you ask me to sit down and narrate my whole destiny? You removed my clothes in your presence to open up to you, hoping you could help. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills, the Bible says. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth. Are we together? 
this is how it works in this kingdom this is how our fathers taught us this is how the patriarchs taught us the bible called them elders every one of those elder is worth your study every single one by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice give us genesis 4 and verse 7 genesis chapter 4 and verse 7 cain and abel offered sacrifices and that of abel was received and that of cain was not received and he was angry and here's what god told him in fact let's start from verse 6 we're going to do some praying this night and the lord said unto cain why art thou wroth why is thy countenance fallen verse 7 he says if thou doest well give us niv what does niv say there if thou doest what is right i think that should be niv's rendition can we get niv well let's just work with this if thou doest right niv says if you do what is right will you not be accepted that means it's not because your name was cain is that there are there is an obedient pathway but if you do not do what is right sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you but you must master it is it that god does not like our own family you know people send me all kinds of text messages apostle we have prayed though it's like god does not hear please help him tell us we are there you know and i know that sometimes they say these things sincerely but please don't get me i'm not being sarcastic it's the job of people we are shepherds we should listen to people no matter how you know all of the tantrums and everything that is that is the whole idea but listen to me i can tell you the same lord is rich unto all if you do that which is needful Apostle, I'm not a giver, but I want to rise. It will not work that way. I am not valuable, but I want to rise. It will not work that way. I don't value relationships and I don't pay the price to invest in it, but I know I must be. No, it will not work that way. These are the forces of knowledge. One genuine kingdom relationship can bless and help you. Some of you have thrown every valuable person in your life. Say, I'm alone. The most important thing is that God is with me. Are you receiving the wisdom that comes from him hmm. are we together very simple things become difficult when you do not know how to outsource spiritual intelligence they looked onto him and their faces were lightened it's time to start changing genuinely it's time beyond shouting amen someone god brought you to church to get angry while you are sitting you should tell yourself i am tired i am there should be a holy dissatisfaction as a man of god i'm tired of these games and jamboree that i'm playing in the name of ministry it's time to settle down and really begin to produce results this jumping from pillar to post invites me i am a man of god fighting left and right these petty things no it's time to camp with truth Lord, it's time to produce results that glorify you. Are we together? Your children are stubborn. None of them is listening to you running from pillar to post. You say go left, they go right. Don't say this thing is in our bloodline. You are watching the devil destroy your future. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that my children will serve my God. Don't say I've tried my best. You too, you have seen it now. No, no, no. It is not your best that the destiny is looking for. It is God's word. Are we together? You are a man of God and your ministry is not working. Go and do a one, two, three hour prayer meeting in your auditorium, only you. This pray for me, pray for me thing has produced laziness among believers thank god for there's a place for prophetic intercession but there is a place where you take the bull by the horn lock your doors and stay with the one who called you put a mat on the ground and pray father you sent me if i didn't hear you let's verify it here i'm not ashamed to know that i was wrong but let's let's look let me tell you there is a way that you can get angry this is what happened to a a allen he locked himself and told his wife, he said, Honey, do not open this door until the power of God comes upon me. 
and she thought he was joking he stayed there until fire landed on his head from heaven when he went to the crusade ground the difference was clear man of god you are in ministry and your ministry is not producing results no signs and wonders it's time to return back and say lord please place upon my life that which gives evidence according to acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all hallelujah the moment you start tolerating negative things and you smile around it you are giving the devil room for continuity don't wait until it becomes a disaster the moment it does not look like christ pick up the word the sword of the spirit and begin to engage some of you who are going to take a few minutes to pray tonight i'm charging your heart because in this year of open doors god truly desires that you walk in certain realms listen if your life does not bear fruit after a time you will start getting angry i'm telling you you will be angry you will be jealous you will be envious is wounded people that wound others you must pray that god gives you personal results and abraham was old and well stricken in age genesis 24 and verse 1 and god had blessed him in all things all things all things genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken every stubborn situation that will not bow to you make it bow to the word if it does not respect you let it respect the word for the bible says that the word of god has been so exalted that should be is it romans 1 16 did i get that right Romans 1 16 give it to us let's see Romans oh dear no Colossians 1 16 is it by him all things were made both things that are visible and invisible that's right for by him all things created were created that are in heaven and that are in the earth both visible and invisible whether there be thrones or dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him the word and for him that means even the things that will not bow to you step aside and put the word there and watch them bow to it do you believe what i'm telling you When it's time to engage, you engage with the word of God. Oh, this is the year that I must carry my baby. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the basis? I am tired. That is not scriptural prayer. That is sympathy. You are spiritualizing sympathy. You go to verses like I think it's Isaiah 54 now. It says, rejoice thou that didst not bear break forth into singing i think that should be verse one did i get that right yes for many are the children sing O barren thou that didst not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that did not travel with child you keep this scripture in front of your phone your laptop are we together now you can get an audio version of this scripture play it on repeat all through the night while you are sleeping you are soaking your spirit in that reality till you start having a godly dream not a demonic dream of you carrying a child the one god gives you as a sign and you wake up knowing that you are ready for your child listen to me please do what you hear me teach you and by the privilege of god's grace i don't claim to know everything but ladies and gentlemen, you should know by now, I will be lying if I tell you I don't know what I'm saying. Some of you need to go back home this night and while you are sleeping, just get some strategic scriptures, put them on audio, put them on repeat. I didn't just start teaching this when we came here to Abuja. It's been so for many years. Put it on repeat. Get very sound worship instead of all these garbages that destroy your spirit man 
there is gunfire in front of you and you are wasting your time listening to all kinds of things no there is none like you painter of the sky you get those songs and you begin to put them and just you listen to all of those songs and they begin to build your spirit man then you wake up in the night and wash it down with tongues then you repeat again then you repeat again then you repeat again when he touched his eyes the first time he didn't see clearly he did the same thing again there are times you don't need to do anything different do it again you wake your wife and say my wife this is why you married me stand up this this nonsense happening in this family must end you stand at that side of the wall let me stand at this side of the wall and let us pray and get some things right and be snoring whereas you are in trouble no there is time for battle my brothers and sisters you don't engage with superstition you take the word is it says take the shield of faith is that in your bible where which you will quench how many all the fiery darts of the enemy oh my light you must break forth abuja hear my voice in the name of jesus the bible says i am blessed in the city whatever has closed the gate of this city i come against you in the name of jesus christ he said i've set before you an open door before you start praying arrange scriptures don't just pray like someone who is not born again no arrange scriptures even if it means to read it read it where are the helpers of my destiny and they don't seem to show up in the name of jesus i declare did the bible not say gentiles are coming to my light i now have the light but i'm yet to see the gentiles gentiles where are you i speak to you come to my light kings come to the brightness of my rising for my shame i receive double where no man ever man has deserted me i become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of i am blessed in the city blessed in the country the ministry god has given me you are growing by the power of the holy spirit souls have been saved lives have been transformed let the redeemed of the lord say so i am redeemed so i say so let the healed of the lord say so hear me you are preparing to go for a conference as a man of god don't just get up and look for the clothes you will wear and go and act as if God did not send you. In the name of Jesus Christ, when he sent them two by two, they returned back saying even the devils. That means every time God sends you, there is a report he's waiting for. Whatever kills my evidence, I curse you in the name of Jesus. As I'm going to minister or going for that business meeting, help them. Listen, as a man of God, know that you are anointed. There is a grace upon your life. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the Bible says Esther obtained favor in the sight of all that looked upon her how many people have looked upon you what came as a result of their looking upon you some of you they looked upon you and that's where trouble came do you believe what I'm telling you this is how it works walk around your house don't say i have one small room you speak like that you will never have a bigger place the size of the room is not the issue the bible says elijah told the woman you need multiplication shut the door behind you and begin to engage certain things there are things you do in the spirit you are the only one who should see it let me tell you koinonia hear me i submit to you by the spirit of god do not get into this life of carelessness and demeaning the sacrifices of men of God. People do not rise by mistake. I'm sorry, don't, don't think that I'm, 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 forgive me if you think it's pride. There are many people who see results and think it just happens. No, sir. Go and find out what people do behind the scenes when you are not seeing. Don't be deceived by the clothes and all of these things. Go and find out what happens behind. 
Are we together? When you have done business with the realm of the spirit and heaven signs, there is nothing the earth can do about it again. I sense a strong anointing. God is challenging someone. He said, if you keep giving explanations, you will never rise. It's time to start engaging. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, when this ministry started growing, when we were in Zaria, it was largely students. And sincerely, let me tell you from a financial standpoint, how much are you going to get from students? It's not that you are depending on this, but you know what I'm saying. I'm being very sincere with you. And we began to pray. And God started helping, sending help from across the globe. It didn't, it's not the location. Stop giving flimsy excuses. Take the word of God. For as long as you give excuses, you endorse the limitations of Satan. There are seven or eight billion people on earth. Everybody will not tell God no. Is someone listening? Yes. This is what I believe. That we will never get to a point where we'll be stranded as a ministry. No. For as long as the word of God is here, you can change the situation of your life. Your influence is at the mercy of the revelation of the word that you have. There are many doors that have been waiting, waiting for you to turn the key. Listen to me. Hear me. Businessmen, if all you do in your shop or your store or your organization is buying and selling, except you, you bring in a charm to help you, you will not rise that way. There are times you need to lock your office, remove your suit, wear your priestly regalia. As the CEO in this company, you are not only coordinating sales from overseas. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I stand as a priest and as a king. According to James 2 and verse 26, that a body without a spirit is dead. I activate the spirit of this business. Business, you are a body. The spirit component that keeps you alive, I call it by faith. You see, unbelievers know what I'm teaching you. They do it all the time. We laugh at them yet cannot deny the results. There are many unbelievers including businessmen, politicians. They never take any risk without consulting the realm of the spirit. No matter how simple the situation is. Don't go out of your house without speaking to your day. In the name of Jesus I decree and declare. Don't say I'm in a hurry I didn't have time. You don't you can be baffing and speaking in the name of Jesus I declare this is the day that the Lord has made I declare that my steps are ordered for the Bible declares that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord no confusion and chaos by the Spirit of the Living God souls are saved through my life today lives are transformed through my life today I am a soul winner the blessings of a soul winner comes upon me according to Daniel 12 and verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness will shine as the stars even forever since I invest my life turning many to righteousness I must shine like the star and nothing will stop that rising Let's go back now to 2 Peter 1 and verse 4. Whereby, 1 Peter 1 and verse 4, my apologies. Okay, yes, no, you're right. Go back to KJV, please. It says, whereby are given to us this great and exceeding precious promises. Now you understand. Are given to us, Joshua Selman, don't say I don't have anything. Here's what happens many times in our homes. You have your Bible somewhere. 
but because your ATM is empty because your pot is empty because everything is empty you forget this and you say I have nothing you are making the mistake of the wife of the sons of the prophet her whole house had nothing but there was a little cruise and that cruise was saying if you know what to do with me I can turn you from a pauper to a blessed woman your being a widow is not the reason why you are where you are when she met the prophet the prophet said there is a responsibility component I need to introduce to you he says what do you have in your house she said nothing for someone what do you have in your house no job except a Bible what do you have in your house nothing except an audio material with 10 scriptures that talk about my victory in Christ what do you have in your house I do not even have any serious thing except a little phone that has limited um, memory that has three or four scripture and the prophet said what you have is enough go and lock your door this is what I'm telling you prophetically. Go and lock your door this week. You have been running around people. Everybody knows what is wrong with you because we find pride in attracting sympathy. Everybody, hey, yeah, are you watching? No, shut the door. Harakatoskiata. By the time you shut the door, three hours in the spirit and you are speaking prophetically God will wake many people arise for the sake of my sent one arise for the sake of my daughter arise for the sake of my son listen to me from tonight I want you to make a covenant with God that your approach to any and all matters of your life must be a word-based approach. Say after me, word-based approach. One more time, say word-based approach. Your approach to a financial situation, word-based approach. That means until you have found what the word says, don't act. Don't act, no matter the pressure, remain there. You are about to start a business. What gives you the guarantee that you will succeed? I got some capital. You are already in, you are already in deception. Capital is not what it takes to excel in business. It is not only clients you have. You have wicked spirits that fight the purposes of God. There is the king of Tyre and Sidon. Go and find out. He sits upon a mountain. There is Jezebel. The she goddess that rides upon the horse and prides herself drinking the blood of the Matthias. It takes more than buying and selling to excel. There is a mountain where you climb your commodities, your soul. Except you are ready to sell your soul. There are levels in life that you can never attain unto. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Many people have sold their soul to the devil because they are looking for mundane things but he said i wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health but ensure that while you are in health that your soul also prospers hallelujah i'm not a prayer warrior become one now i'm not really this word people please change those kinds of things Give yourself a new orientation. The way I was brought up, we just prayed a five minutes prayer. No problem. Thank God for those who led you thus far. It's their leadership that brought you here. Now that you are here, open your Bible. Wake up in the night. Walk around your house. In the name of Jesus, I declare all that the Lord has given me is blessed in the mighty name of jesus shame and reproach is far from me 2023 in the name of jesus christ you must open up to me every month is a door every day is a door every minute is a door i speak to you a father be open unto me in the name of jesus christ negative things happen around your life you can respond emotionally you can respond culturally you can respond scripturally i give you my recommendation based on the integrity of the word every other formula will eventually fail but the word will stand word based approach 
Apostle, right now I am in debt to the millions and to the billions. What am I going to do? Stop where you are. If you find yourself in a well, stop digging. Because if you keep digging, you will keep going down. Stop where you are, number one. Number two, go and study all the people who were owing in the Bible. How did they come out? Every time you see an issue of debt and finances, it was the prophetic that brought them out. Whether it was the axe head that fell, the prophetic that brought them out. The, the wife of the sons of the prophet, the prophetic that brought them out. The next thing is to begin to engage in prayer. Lord, grant me direction what anointing has been allocated for my rising because it's not every prophetic grace that lifts you there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent there were some widows that were waiting for elisha there were some widows that were waiting for other prophets he went to one widow and left is someone learning the devil has vowed that you will never have an honorable job. If you agree with him and say amen, it will be so. But you can change the narrative in the name of Jesus Christ. Things are not working for you. Lord, I take responsibility. Grant me grace. It's not always about the devil. Sometimes it is the bankruptcy of wisdom. Listen, if you want God to help you, you must take responsibility in your life. Show me what I am doing wrong that is making me always fight with my wife lord it is not your will that we keep beating ourselves in front of the children there is something we do not know and i am ready to learn if it is a wrong training or wrong mentorship i take responsibility because pride goes before a fall the moment you bow down knowledge comes to you immediately god can send you to one 15 minutes clip online and that becomes your deliverance Can I tell you, you don't get results in pride and with pride. This is a disclaimer I must give you before we begin to pray. There are many people who are too big to be helped by God. It takes humility. I come to you, O oh God, even if you are in ignorance, come to him. Lord, this situation in this family, I cannot pay the school fees of my children right now. And I've done my best. I'm walking in righteousness. Lord, I pray that you will help me. And because your heart is humble, the Bible says the Lord is nigh them who are of a broken and a contrite heart. Psalm 51. When you cry before him with a broken and a contrite heart, he comes to help you.